Hi guys, this is Thomas from Summer Technologies. Um, today I am going to record my first video post. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of videos over the next couple of weeks, just showing you how to do certain things within Revit. So today I'm going to be talking about how to make more realistic and beautiful looking renders within Revit. So I'll just get straight into things and the first thing I want to talk about is materials. So the one thing to remember is that materials are one of the most important aspects of Revit and especially rendering. Uh, as you can see from the image in front of me, it's something that I've already rendered. But the thing to remember is that every element that you see in this image, every element in every project has a material associated with it. So from the walls, the roofs, the car, the trees, the windows, everything has material. If we go to this um, view here, this is just a family that I created earlier. And it's basically just a bike storage unit with a see-through link fence. And if we click on the family itself, we go to edit type, we can see that there is a material associated with it. So if you click on that material, go to appearance, this is actually what affects what the material looks like in the render. So you can see that there's a PNG image associated with the material. If we change that image, it changes how the render looks. So I have obviously associated transparency because I want to be able to see through this image. So I've set up the transparency at 100, so I should be able to see through it. If I do a quick render right now of this, which I'm going to do now, one sec. I'm just going to do a quick medium render. Draft is actually quicker, but this is just of one family. So I'm just going to do a quick render right now. So what we should see is that we're able to see through the material, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, as you can see, it's a medium render and it still only took about 20 seconds. So that's fairly good. Now, if we moved on to the next view, this is basically just a quick project that I threw together and it basically just shows an image of a guy returning home to his house, parked his car. But we're just going to do a quick render of this view because you can see that it's, it's a nice looking view. There's a lot you can see in there, but there's also space in the background to fill it with something. So if we were to do a quick render right now, we'll just do a quick daytime render. You know it's a daytime render when you change the lighting scheme from artificial only to sun only so when you do artificial only that basically means that it's a nighttime render it basically just uses the artificial light so it would take the light from this lamppost the light from the inside of the house that's what it uses to illuminate the scene but we're going to go with sun only and we're also going to change the background you can obviously put in an image you can put in a color we're just going to put in the sky and we're going to make it very cloudy so i'll just do a quick draft render with this one should only take a couple of seconds. You can see when we do a quick draft render that you can see there is the cloudy background. It's fairly well actually for a draft render. But you have to remember, it's all about the way we looked at this view. It's all about the angles that we created. I just created a quick cram camera 3D view of this. But if we move on to the next image, this is another view. It's basically of the exact same project it's of the exact same man everything in the project is the same it's just a different view okay so if we did a quick render of this it's going to be drastically different so i'll just run another quick render but this time i'm actually going to make it artificial only and i'm just going to make it draft and you'll probably notice how dark it's going to be now you can always adjust the exposure afterwards when you do a render but the angle is just not there. We've, we've done that quick draft render. If we actually moved on to see some of the renders that we've done online, you can see that I just basically adjusted this one a little bit. And it's a big difference in these views and how you actually change the exposure of a view. Okay, so if we go back to that 3D view here, I basically made a daytime render and a nighttime render. So I'm going to do another nighttime render of this one. I'm going to go render, I'm going to make it artificial only. Okay, and I'm going to make it image. So I'm going to actually customize an image. So I just, I'm just going to put in a starry background. 
But you might notice that when I do this, it's going to come out very dark because it's just artificial only lighting. So I'll just do a quick draft render. You're not going to see much light. You can see there's very little light. You can't really see the building. You can only kind of see the image in the background, which is not what we want. But you will notice that if we went to do this within the cloud, if you render it this way, you just render in the cloud, you send away or you pick what standard you want. If you do standard or final, final actually costs a cloud credit, but we'll just do standard. Okay, I won't do it now because I've already done it. But if we go to the online version, we can see that this is what it looks like when we do it online. It actually comes out a lot better. I've also done it of the other view and you can see it's a lot more dreary. But the thing to remember, and it's just a big example of how changing lighting and adjusting angles can be so important. You can see here that it's the difference between creating a beautiful render that you know people are going to enjoy, that it's going to help, you know, it's going to encourage or impress potential buyers of a house. But if we change that and we actually fix certain lines, it's it's the difference between scaring them emotionally for life and making the house look like a scene from The Exorcist, which is not what we want. Okay, we want to make it look cheery and nice. You know, so that you can see you, you can see a person being welcomed coming home to this beautiful house that you've just rendered. So if we move on then to kind of the final aspect, like for me, this video is about you know creating beautiful renders, and there's nothing more beautiful to me than Iron Man standing in front of a particular monument that everyone should know. So I basically just put in an image of the Eiffel Tower in the background. I've adjusted it a bit, so we can obviously we can change it to original size, we can stretch it, we can change the, we can change the height, but I'm just going to leave it at the original size. This building is hiding a lot of stuff, but we have this area up here that needs to be filled with something. So if I just do another quick draft render here, it should only take a couple of seconds. And I'm going to show you exactly how to put in this image, and then we're going to show you how to adjust the exposure. And that should really affect the way we view an image. We saw the previous two examples that we had, two very different looking renders and how it can affect the outcome of a drawing. It's the same here. So you can see this drawing here, little Iron Man standing in front of it posing. You know, if we change the exposure, we can make him actually make this gray. So we can apply that. You know, some people I would consider that a beautiful render, you know, Iron Man posing in front of the Eiffel Tower on a summer's day in a black and white photo. You know, this is what's most important with doing renders. You have to appreciate the detail that you put in. You have to appreciate the detail that goes into creating material, the detail that goes into creating the angle of a 3D view. You know that you have to make this as visually pleasing as possible. So it's so important that you really appreciate the little details. It's a, this image wouldn't have come out as nice if I didn't adjust the exposure. I didn't make it grey. Maybe if I made it brighter, if I made it darker, you know, it's really going to affect how we see the image. You know, it's not going to come out nice. If you made it too dark, we have the same issue. So I think that's all I can kind of go into. I, I wanted to keep this video as short as possible. I could ramble on forever and ever, but I won't. So um, for now, I just want to say thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more videos that we will have posted soon. Hopefully they'll, uh, they'll keep improving and we'll be getting better.